okay so again uh, uh, we we continue the basic counting uh, principles uh, more uh, examples so today uh, we are going to look at uh, a very interesting uh, question to start with it's called the northeast lattice paths okay this is going to be a very useful uh, uh, idea uh, and it could help you come up with many different proofs in nice ways uh, many combinatorial proofs for uh, several of the things that we are going to look okay so this uh, uh, is uh, as follows so the one question that we want to look at is as follows <coughs> you have uh, this grid okay so on this grid you are uh, allowed to move uh, from the origin let's say 0 0 is called the origin uh, you are only allowed to move either to the right from wherever you are standing right you can go to the right or upwards you know you are standing let's say let's say here uh, let's say here you are not allowed to uh, to to go down or you are not allowed to go left right these two are not allowed so at any position you can go either to your right or upwards so this is called northeast lattice path because we consider the upward movement as north movements and uh, right movement as the east movement right in a map usually you that is the convention that we follow so this is called northeast lattice path <coughs> now the question is that suppose i start from 0 0 right and then uh, I want to go, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then uh, I want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up. Okay. So I want to go to the 6, 5 uh, grid point. Right. So this is, you can assume it's an infinite grid, but we are only going from 0, 0 to 6, 5. Now, how many different ways uh, you can go to 6, 5? Starting from 0, 0. That is the question. Can you solve this? Can you count the number of ways you can go from 0, 0 to 6, 5 using only north or east movements, right, from this grid? So, think about it for a few minutes and then continue with the lecture, right? Uh, so, Let me let me uh, give you how to count this. So how many how many ways we can uh, how many how many steps we need to reach six comma five, right? So we definitely need to take uh, eleven steps to reach six comma five, right? Because I definitely need to make six right movements before I can reach the, the column number six, and I need to make five uh, top movements before I can reach the, the Y coordinate with five, right? So the, the, the row number five, right? So to reach six comma five, I definitely need to make exactly six right movements and five top movements or north movements. And I don't have any other uh, you know, possibility, right? Because if I go one more left, there is no left movement allowed, right? Or one more up, I cannot come down because there is no down movement allowed. So therefore, I have to only move right or left. And since I have to take exactly six right steps and six, uh, five uh, uh, up uh, north steps, uh, I know that I have exactly 11 movements. No matter which route I am going to take, I am going to make exactly 11 movements, right? Now, I have 11 possible movements. Now, out of these 11 possible movements, six of them must be east movements, right, or right movements, and five of them must be up movements or north movements. But suppose I decide which are the right movements I am going to make, right? I say that, okay, here I am going to take a right movement. Here I am going to take a right movement. Then he will say that, okay, I'm going to make a right movement here. 
and then a right movement here and a right movement here right then you know that uh yeah or maybe here also right the right movement here right so so once i decide which are the precisely the six right movements i am going to take the other up movements are pre decided there is no choice right because if i want to make the right movement here then i know that i must have moved uh, up here and also here there is no choice i also must have moved up here up here and up here so these are without any choice so therefore the moment i decide the six right movements my five north movements are decided so therefore i just need to decide the six choices out of the 11 possible movement options so 11 choose six okay so 11 to 6 possibilities are there or instead i can choose the up movements the five possible ways so 11 choose five both of them will give the same number because we already know that 11 choose five is equal to 11 choose 11 minus 5 which is 6 so therefore i have 11 choose 6 or 11 choose 5 possible northeastern lattice route from 00 to 6.5 you can replace 6.5 with any number and you will get the <coughs> arbitrary m comma n that is pass right this m plus n choose m or m plus n choose n <coughs> now using this now we can easily ask some further questions for example i will say that okay instead of uh, instead of this i am going to need uh, uh the paths i can make starting from 0 0 going to this particular uh, point right maybe the so so maybe this this paths are representing some one way streets in some you know, some weird city right where you can only move north uh, and east movements right and uh, there is uh, happen to be a very famous uh, bakery right at this position b right So, so i want to you know i start from my office let's say at 00 and going back home but then uh, i am going to visit this bakery to buy some stuff from there no it's not healthy maybe we don't want bakery we want something else right some vegetable shop maybe right we so i want to buy some fruits or vegetables from the here and then i want to go home right so then i want to say that okay i want to stop from my office at this place now how many ways i can go from here to home if i am guaranteed that i will stop at this particular shop so try to uh, come up with an answer by using the previous methods that we know and the one that we just found out <clears throat> now here is a question uh, that uh, you know algorithm people will be very interested in for example like you have a matrix product let's say n n plus 1 matrices are there m1 m2 m3 etc m n plus 1 these matrices are to be multiplied as m1 into m2 into m3 into etc m n plus 1 now this matrix multiplication of course uh, Uh, you know it's not uh, commutative so i cannot arbitrarily change the order of this thing so i have to keep the order of the matrices but now when i do the multiplication i can only multiply two matrices at a time right i cannot multiply all of them together right so i have to multiply two of them then uh, you know i can multiply this multiplied number with something else right in the next one in that order whatever or i can instead like i say that i multiply m1 and m2 first then i multiply m3 and m4 first then i multiply m1 m2 with m3 m4 the product of m1 and m2 with product of m3 and m4 right that is possible or maybe you know i can just multiply m1 and m2 first find the answer then multiply with that with m3 then find the answer multiply the product of these three now with m4 so there are several ways i can do this product to find the same product 
there are several ways i can do this and some of them may be more efficient than the other depending on the type of matrices that we are looking at but you know with uh, you know without looking at that we want to say how many different ways i can do the matrix multiplication so find the number of ways to parenthesize this product so that i can find different ways of multiplying this for example let's say that you have let's say four matrices a b c and d okay. so if i want to multiply a b c and d i can first let's say that you know uh, i will say that okay I multiply uh, A and B first, right? Then I multiply C and D. Then I multiply the product A, B, and C, D. So this is how I give the bracket, right? Then I can also say that uh, A, B, C, D I take. I multiply A and B first. Then I multiply with the C. Then I multiply with D, right? So this is the uh, second possibility, right? Uh, I want to just separate them out so that it doesn't uh, look like the same thing. We will just extend it here. Okay, so then uh, what are the other possibilities? Well, A, B, C, D I have. Then I multiply, let's say, uh, B and C. I mean, uh, yeah, first, and then I multiply with A with B and C. Then I multiply with this product with D. Okay, this is one possibility. Or uh, I can multiply C and D first. Then I multiply with it with B. Then I multiply with A. This is another possibility. Any other possibility? Uh, I multiply, let's say. Uh, A and uh, yeah, so what is the other way? There is another way, though. Mm, maybe I multiply with the uh, yeah, so I, I multiply B and C first, then I multiply it with D, right? Then I multiply with A, right? So this gives a different order, right? So here I multiply A and B, C and D separately, then multiply them together. Here I multiply A and B, multiply it with C, the product, and then multiply that product with D. Here I do B, C first, then A with B, C, and then that product with D. Here I do B, C first, then B, C with D first, and then A with the product. And here I do C, D first, then B with C, D, and then A with B, C, D. Now, I have found out five different ways. Can you find more? Maybe there are more. I don't know. Right? So, you figure out uh, if there is any more or if it is the exhaustive uh, list. Now, but I wanted to find out for general n plus 1 matrices or whatever number. Right? So I just put n plus 1 for some uh, reason, but that is not really important. <coughs> Now, the interesting thing is that uh, to find out this, we can use uh, we can use uh, the idea of the lattice path that we were looking at, the northeastern lattice path. Okay. <clears throat> so, if you have uh, uh, n plus one matrices, then you are going to put n pairs of brackets, right? That we saw, like we have four things. Right, which is 3 plus 1. So I put 3 pairs of brackets right, for the product. So I put 2, 2 together. So therefore, you need 1 less. Okay. <clears throat> because there is going to be exactly uh, whatever the number of terms minus 1 uh, products happening. Right. Number of products is exactly 1 less. So therefore, that is why uh, you have uh, <coughs> 1 less bracketing. So you are going to put parentheses now. N parentheses to... Uh, define this product, but that is precisely saying that how many different ways you can put parenthesis so that the uh, you know you always have uh, you know the number of parenthesis on the left more than the number of parenthesis on the right because if otherwise we are going to be in uh, 
uh, trouble right because uh, you know when you when you want to balance it out uh, we want to go from the left right <coughs> so we want to find the balance for answers uh, uh, and count how many of them are possible if there are going to be n per answers so we want to find the total number of balance per answers where there are n of them right? n pairs of them <coughs> now finding this is going to be going to be uh, reducible to uh, counting a type of path from origin to n comma n right you want to find a n pairs of brackets and find the number of balance balances that is possible with this it is basically counting the number of paths from 0 0 to n comma n okay with some property now can you think of what what is the property that we are looking at right we want to look at the paths the northeastern lattice path starting from 0 0 to n comma n but we want to make sure that uh, this will give the total number of balance per answers <coughs> so again stop uh, and think about it for a few minutes before uh, uh, you look at the uh, the answer how to do this Sorry. So here is how uh, it is going to be. Okay. So I want to start from uh, the zero zero, and I want to produce paths which reaches n comma n. Right. Now let us say that my right movement is going to denote a left parenthesis, and an upward movement denotes a right parenthesis, closing bracket, closing parenthesis. So opening bracket and closing bracket. Okay. So the right movement is a opening bracket. Then the upward movement is a closing movement. Now, <clears throat> when I start from 0, 0, you know, I have to make a movement. But now, whenever I put a parenthesis, I have to start with an opening parenthesis before I can put a closing parenthesis. So only after I move a right movement, I can go upwards. Now, can I go again upwards from here? If I go upwards from here, what happens is that I am going to put another right parenthesis. But then this is no more balanced, right? It cannot be balanced because if you are going just uh, to the right, you can never uh, you know add things to the right. You cannot now you know if you move, make a movement here and then here. What you are going to do is to do this and this. This is not going to make the parenthesis balance. So therefore, I always need to make sure that the number of left parenthesis is never more than the number of right parenthesis that has appeared so far. Right? I mean, never less than the number of right parenthesis appeared so far. Or in other words, when we are making the movements in the uh, in the lattice. Moments in the lattice, we cannot cross the main diagonal, a 0, 0 to n, and there is a diagonal. Because if you are going to cross that diagonal, that means that we have made more upward movements than the number of rightward movements. So, therefore, that will say that the number of uh, right per answers is more than the number of left per answers that is used so far. Which may, means that the balancing, uh, the parenthesis is not balanced. It's not going to be balanced. So therefore, I want to find out roots from 0, 0 to n comma n that does not cross the origin, but only makes right and upward movements. <clears throat> so I want to count the number of such paths. Now the question is that can you count the number of paths from 0, 0 to n n? So I, I, you know, so we know that all such paths we counted that right? right is n plus n right which is 2n choose n right m plus n choose whatever m or n which is n plus n choose n which is 2n choose n right so we know that total number of lattice paths without looking at the diagonal total number of lattice paths is 2n choose n right total number of 
north east paths <coughs> but now we put the condition that it cannot cross the blue diagonal right the main diagonal that we came up with so it must always lie below it right not that it, it should not cross it should be below it because the left parenthesis must be more than the right parenthesis before we i mean uh, not strictly more than uh, at, at least as many as the right parenthesis right so <coughs> how do you how do you count now the guys who doesn't go up right so we want to find the guys who doesn't go above the diagonal so can we count this so think about this for some time in fact yeah, i would even recommend that you you think about it for even a half a day or like you know something like you no know, spend some time thinking about this before you look at the uh, solution so <clears throat> let me tell you what is the uh, solution i can come up with there could be other ways to solve this there are actually other ways to solve this and uh, what i am going to do is to use our uh, well known subtraction principle which means that i am going to find the bad guys and remove them i i think that that is easier to count okay. so i am going to count the bad guys so what are the bad guys the bad guys are the paths which crosses the diagonal right it goes above the diagonal so i want to count the northeast and latest paths which goes above the diagonal at least some point okay so maybe I, i don't want to raise this okay so suppose some path goes above the diagonal <clears throat> then it must cross the diagonal at least at some point right now the first time it crosses the diagonal i mark that point as special so you take whatever your path is right your path may may do like this right or it might even go further then it might go right again right again maybe right then go up right maybe this is one of your paths right or maybe you know you started uh, in another way right you started maybe right itself then went up but then went up again here right then you went right 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 maybe you went right then you went up again here up again here maybe up again here then you went right right so this path also cross the diagonal here right so these these are the bad guys right we don't want such paths right <clears throat> now can you count this kind of bad path in a different way you might ask like okay what is the difference in counting the one which is below and then the ones which has crossed ones right now there is a difference we will see <clears throat> so what i am going to do is a trick so the trick is the following okay? so every bad path which means the path uh, you know the path that crosses the diagonal crosses it for the first time you know right somewhere right along this path okay so the moment it crosses i mark that point as special okay now what i am going to do is that i am going to i am going to reroute this path by doing the following okay so after the point you know till the uh, point it cross i will not do anything okay after the point cross this right exactly once right the first time it crosses any path you know the, the remaining path i will look at the remaining path and say that okay any time it goes us to the right i move instead i move upwards okay so i am going to continue this path as follows so i instead of going up uh, right i am going to go up okay the next movement is again right so i again move up again the next movement is right so i again move up okay now then the next movement is where it is going upward so therefore i move right okay again up therefore right 
uh, I should not use the this thing. I will use the dot just to make sure it is the uh, the virtual path that I am creating, right? So again, three upward movements. So therefore, I am going to make three right movements. Then I am going to write again here. So therefore, I make an upward movement. Okay. So so there is must be something here. So I will extend my infinite grid uh, to this. Okay. So uh, then, so once I made this uh, movement, I have uh, I have reached this point, right? Somewhere, whatever. What was that point? It is the point I moved uh, n plus uh, mm, uh, n minus one comma n plus one, right? Some place, right? I reach. Okay, so I I did this. So after it grows once, I I decided okay, wherever it was going right, I'm going to go up, and wherever it is going up, I'm going to go right. Right. Now I do this for the you know every path. Okay, so the the right path that we are looking at, for example, right cross here. Now since it cross here, it was going up, and then next movement was up. So instead, I will go right. Okay. Then the next movement was right, so instead I will go up. Again the next was right, so I will go up. Again the next was right, so I will go up. And then the next was up, therefore I will go right. So I happen to reach n minus 1 comma n plus 1 again here. But by the claim is that every path, no, after this, you know, uh, this uh, switching right of the things after the thing will always reach this point particular point so all the bad paths i can do this you know idea that you know right makes uh, left and you know like the the right movement becomes the uh, upward movement and the upward movement becomes the right movement so this is basically what we are going to do is precisely looking at this this diagonal, okay, and we are going to reflect the path, you know, which is above this, uh, with respect to uh, this diagonal. Okay, I am looking at the reflection of the path. So this path was like this. So now it has, with respect to this diagonal, its reflection is going to be like this. Similarly, this path. Its reflection is going to be like this. Now the claim is that every such reflection will come to the point n minus one comma n plus one. Can you think why? So why does the reflection always reach n minus one comma n plus one? Okay, you need to answer this. Okay, because if I give all the answers, there is no fun, right? But it is easy. So think about this. All the you know, a reflected paths will finally reach this point n minus 1 comma n plus 1. So we only reflected the bad paths, right? We are going to count the bad paths. So every bad path after the reflection reaches this point. And now every path from 0, 0 to n minus 1, n plus 1 on this grid, right? This subgrid, I mean, not sub of the, the original one, but uh, this. Uh, grid that we are looking at right right so every path from 0 0 to n minus 1 comma n plus 1 of the grid corresponds to a bad path after the reflection the other way okay so instead of doing this way reflection i take the other way reflection right right becomes i mean the same rule but now take the reflection of the Path going from 0, 0 to n minus 1, comma n plus 1, they will all reach n, comma n, and they will all cross the main diagonal at least once. This is something you can observe and see and I'll try to answer why again. Okay, so why? So why the reflected path always reaches here and all the paths to n minus 1, comma n plus 1 
reaches back uh, to n comma n and all such uh, reflected paths will have crossed the diagonal at least once okay <clears throat> now once you have this observation right once you have this you can uh, do the counting because we are saying that we look at all possible paths starting from 0 0 to n comma n and which are the paths which crosses the diagonal by goes above the diagonal those are the paths which after the reflection reaches n minus 1 comma n plus 1 and we said that there is a one to one correspondence between the paths that start from 0 0 to n minus 1 n plus 1 and the bad paths from 0 0 to n comma n which crosses the diagonal right because every such path gives a bad path here and every bad path always reaches here okay so try to explain why this is true okay and convince yourself it is the case and then we have the answer so we have uh, 2n choose n possible total path from 0 0 to n comma n and then going from 0 0 to n minus 1 comma n plus 1 we have n minus 1 plus n plus 1 choose n minus 1 right these are the bad paths right so i can subtract so this is going to be equal to 2n choose n minus 2n choose n minus 1 uh, i think i made hmm. uh, maybe okay. 2n choose n minus 2n choose n minus 1 okay and you can use either your algebra or some other nice arguments think about this whichever way you want to finally show that this quantity is going to be equal to again right 1 by n plus 1 to 2 n choose n okay it's going to be 1 by n plus 1 into 2 n choose n <clears throat> so show this and uh, we get the answer and this number is very 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 important okay it has a special name it comes as solution to so many combinatorial questions uh, there are even uh, you know uh, books on this so it's called Catalan number okay so <clears throat> if you look at uh, Richard Shanley's uh, book on uh, enumerative combinatorics he lists some 400 you know the, the updated edition has some 400 or 500 uh, uh combinatorial questions to count things whose answer is going to be the catalan number right so many different areas so many different things it comes from and all of them finally boils down to catalan number so it's called catalan uh, in the uh, memory of a mathematician called catalan catalan number so it's usually right with c capital so it's the name so this is the number 1 by n plus 1 into 2 n to n. Okay. So, Catalan number we just found out is the number of ways to parenthesize the n plus 1 matrix. Okay. Right. Uh, product uh, to do a multiplication. Right. Or it is the number of ways to do the balance parenthesis with n pairs of parenthesis. And it is the number of Pass starting from 0, 0 to n comma n, right, which does not cross the main diagonal, right, which stays below the diagonal, right. So, all these things are, of course, Catalan number already. Now we can find so many other things. So, think about some other situations where you can think of Catalan numbers. Okay?